Tau Anatomy and Physiology. The Tau physiology is closely tied to their society, with the Tau of each caste effectively being a subspecies of the larger race. This was initially a result of adaptation and evolution to suit the different environments each group of the proto-Tau species found themselves in on their homeworld of Tau, although interbreeding between the castes was later forbidden by the ethereals. The Tau are humanoid in shape, although they have hoofed feet and four-digit hats three fingers and one thumb. Their skin is grey-blue, although this can vary in pigmentation between septs and colony worlds. It's rough in texture, leathery, and exudes almost no moisture. Their faces are flat, wide around the eyes, with an eye-shaped slit running from the center of the forehead to where a human's nose would be. Their vision is considered slightly superior to that of humans. Their visual spectrum extends a little more into the ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths. However, their pupils do not dilate, giving poorer depth perception and providing slower vision focusing reflexes than humans, particularly in low light conditions. The olfactory organs of a Tau are inside the mouth. Physical strength and size varies between Tau castes, with the fire cars being the strongest of their kind roughly the size and slightly weaker than an average baseline human because the Tau homeworld has gravity slightly weaker than that of Terra. Only two females have ever been illustrated. The first, Commander Shadow Sun, appeared to have a more human face than males, being smoother and sleeker with larger eyes, a nose-like facial feature and a Y-shaped facial slit instead of an eye. It is not known, however, whether Shadow Sun is representative of all female Tau. The second known Tau female, the subject of an imperial dissection by the Magi of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and the facial characteristics of males. The Tau do not possess psychus and, as a result, have little knowledge of the immaterium beyond its existence. This gives them some level of resistance to warp-based powers affecting the mind, but it offers little, if any, protection against physically manifested offensive psychic powers. This is because the Tau have virtually no psychic presence in the warp. To a demon or any psychers possessed of the witch sight, they appear as a shifting will of the wisps, rather than the burning fire that represents a human soul. As such, they can never possess or develop psychic powers. The Tau are largely unaware of the perils of the immaterial and for this reason have conducted research into the nature of the warb on Medusa 5. However, the conclusion was reached that further research was unfeasible, and that the warp is no place for the greater good, and is best left to those foolhardy races who cannot pull back from that terrible realm. Ethereal cast members also have a diamond-shaped bony ridge on their head. It is believed by Imperial scholars that through this organ, the Ethereals exert a pheromone-based or latent psychic control over the other Tau castes to keep them focused on the greater good. But this is mere speculation, and no evidence of this has yet been found. Due to their notable absence of psychic ability, the Tau have no equivalent to the navigators of the Imperium, 
forcing them to travel at sub-light relativistic speeds. The interstellar vessels therefore take much longer than imperial vessels to traverse the vast distances between the stars, which is one reason their empire has expanded relatively slowly over the centuries. Their warriors receive only limited training in the arts of close combat, usually depending on crude mercenaries to fight in the horrible melees so common in the 41st millennium. However, due to the Tau's superior range of vision in the electromagnetic spectrum and predilection for patience, the Tau have proven themselves to be extremely efficient sharpshooters with the ranged plasma weapons and railguns they primarily rely upon. The Tau tend to look upon other intelligent species as backwards or misguided. Before the commencement of hostilities, they almost always try to reason with their opponents and establish some kind of agreement that will make the use of military force unnecessary. Noted exceptions to this policy are Tau battles with the Orcs, Tyranids, and the Forces of Chaos, with whom they have little to no diplomatic relations. The Tau see no way to reason with them, and do not want them in their empire. 